This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. Stop that. Stop this. It's been a long time since, what, 2002? And I wanted to film and record and show you guys uh, objectively my favorite racing game of all time. What really got me into the genre, what really got me into uh, racing as a whole. Um, so yeah, let's kind of play. So back in the late 90s, EA had their normal studio that was creating uh, the Need for Speed's franchise. And for their sixth installment, the next generation of consoles was coming out for both the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, and the GameCube. So kind of a big moment. So they really wanted to kind of go all out. So they had their normal developer work on the game. And for the PlayStation 2 version, they heard that the PlayStation 2 could really you know, have these huge graphical leaps and had gone out on a limb and taken this little studio called Black Box Studio that was in Vancouver, I believe. And Black Box absolutely blew them out of the water. And this is the game. You know, the rest is history because at that point, you know, EA was blown away so much by Black Box's work and attention to detail and just amazing game in general and said, you know what, we want you to work on pretty much every other game from there. And they were the main developer from Need for Speed Underground up until, I want to say, the run? No. Sometime up there. But yeah, so this game, for those who are curious, I am running the PCSX2, so a PlayStation 2 emulator that's been kind of open sourced and is been kind of around for the better part of this last decade. Very recently, I got the nostalgia bug here and really wanted to bring up some of the PlayStation 2 games of my childhood and actually see if I could get PlayStation 1 games going. So went home, grabbed some PlayStation 2 games, got the emulator up and working, and here we are. Um, so yes, this isn't exactly how it used to look. Um, I had to do a little bit of playing around with the emulator to make sure that it works. So there are some graphical bugs here, so kind of this line across the bottom of the screen as well as the line going around the car. But the rest of it, I think it looks better, honestly, than uh, how it originally looked. So I, I'm very impressed with how the emulator works, and it's just, it looks awesome, and it has very good key bindings for being able to use controller or keyboard, and maybe not the best user interface, but I mean, it's been, again, out in the wild for the better part of a decade, so 2010 was when it was kind of first around. But yes, I really wanted to start out with Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit, and again, the third installment in the series. Um, and I played that one not as much as Hot Pursuit 2, but um, can't really get that one working. So it's, it's a little bit of a struggle right now. Gonna be honest, I remember this game being quite different than this. So, with Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, there are kind of two ways of play. There's a Hot Pursuit version where you'd have less rivals, but then you'd have to deal with traffic and then, uh, you know, the police. And then there was the World Racing or the Championship series, which was more rivals to race against. Maybe traffic on occasion, but uh, definitely more focused on being the better of the drivers versus... Uh, trying to outlast the police. So, unfortunately, there is not a... Uh-oh. There is not a difficulty setting in the Ultimate Racer, which is a Hot Pursuit version, or the Championship Series. Uh, so, it might not be all that interesting as I destroy everybody in my path. So under the Ultimate Racer tree, again, there's, like I was saying before, there's about 30 events. So it kind of goes down to this weird kind of tech tree style where you beat one event and then you open up another set of events that have different sets of rewards, but then kind of cross back with each other and then split apart and cross back. And then finally they get to the end where when you beat the Ultimate Racer, you get the McLaren F1. And there are actually some secret events underneath it when you beat that too. 
Uh, but then you go over to World Racing and kind of the same thing. Uh, you go all the way down to the McLaren F1 LM. Again, a couple additional secret events at the end as well. So a lot of content and with 49 cars to unlock, well, technically less because the Need for Speed versions and whatnot. And then the PC version had some more cop variants and uh, don't worry about that. Yeah, normally the Need for Speed versions of cars, you have to get like, you know, as you can tell off to the side when you get air or you have a clean lap or something like that, um, you'll get little Need for Speed points. And most of the Need for Speed car additions, uh, you just need to collect a absurd amount of points, like, you know, higher end cars between one million to four and a half million points. So literally just playing the game a ton and honestly i enjoyed that because it wasn't dlc it wasn't like behind a paywall or anything it was literally the more points you got you know the the more cars you got and the only way to get points is just by playing a lot and that's it there's no cheat codes well there might have been but i don't remember offhand about those so yeah to be honest this game is incredible so this game in my opinion is probably one of the best need for speeds in general of course this is through heavy rose tinted glasses looking through the nostalgic uh, lenses of you know games of now and the games of back then and the whole rest of it but i love this game so much because <laughs> because of stuff like that uh the graphics at the time, going from the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 2, is night and day. And honestly, I feel like that this still kind of holds up well to this day. Uh, yes, there are people going ahead and they're making, like, uh, remasters through, you know, uh, Unreal Engine 5 and having these absurd lighting engines for, like, previous games. But, like, this, this works. I... This still holds up in my opinion because the AI was a huge leap over the previous games. Um, you know, Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. Uh, the cars were really chaotic and they didn't make a whole lot of sense and they were kind of weird because they just kind of glided along the road. It didn't really look like that they were driving. But after the past couple of installments between uh, High Stakes and uh, Porsche Unleashed, uh, this game, you know, the traffic makes sense. They're in the way, though. <laughs> and the cops are insanely aggressive, but in a good way. Like, it makes it challenging. It's not like they're not pushover or anything like, you know, some uh, previous games are. Well, succeeding games are, more or less. But between that too, I've seen a couple other reviewers talk about this game as well as being very cinematic. Like uh, whenever you go over jumps, there are normally like jump cams and then there are like you buttons that like shoot off like a little rocket where you can see ahead in the track. I've normally turned all that stuff off because they just like the racing itself. But of course, uh, when you have an accident, you can go flying. You've got these cops that are just absolutely they don't care about insurance they don't care about car payments or anything their one goal in life is to run you off the road and it is provides for some absolutely epic racing and even on the expert ai like the other racers are unfortunately a little bit of pushover but that's for someone like myself who has played this game for at minimum 2000 hours over you know my lifetime i know people have probably played this more but this is one of those games where you do want to put in the time because it is just absolutely epic the full way from start to finish. <laughs> road car had driven into the uh, roadblock there. Oops. Man, then we've got these jumps here. <laughs> just jumping over the traffic cars and the cops just sending them into the opposite lane and getting demolished by the traffic it's just it's even with being locked into this difficulty because of the championship or the ultimate race or whatnot it's just it's still awesome so one of the only gripes that i have currently is you know the emulator doesn't appear to enjoy when it's got 
the cinematic of when you're being busted. Uh, that's probably just an issue with this computer. I've gotten it to work to on other computers, and it works fine. Uh, so I don't know what that issue is. But then also the vibration because of uh, the PS2 era. Just a tiny little motor. And they didn't have a lot of uh, fidelity in them yet. But uh, with the Xbox controllers now, which you're able to key map quite well to them, um, the vibration is just constant. And it's just this constant little flutter going on. So no, like, in all honesty, with this game... This is probably the closest game, in my opinion, that you can get to, like, a, you know, a 10 out of 10 review of, like, a 97 out of 100, basically. There are, like, only a couple tiny little things that I have an issue with. 